Hey, I'm Taryn. In this video, I will be talking about my experiences as a fashion intern in New York City. So I interned for two different companies in New York City, and I actually quit one of them. So we'll get more into that later. For a part of my major requirement, you had to intern in I really wanted to go to New York City because it was a place that I was considering moving to after college. It was obviously one of the major places to work in fashion in the world even, and especially in the United States if you want to stay here. So I really wanted to get a feel for New York City, see if I liked it, which I did. I loved it. See if it kind of be feasible for me to live and work there. This company was small. It was a independent designer that focused mainly on custom formal wear and couture garments. I learned so much about like the black fashion ecosystem while I was there. I learned so much about you can't do something, pass it over to a friend or suggest a friend. The lady I interned for, she would get opportunities from like a friend that was like, oh, I can't really handle this right now. This person would be great for it. Or she would do the same. You learn so much and you get so much hands-on experience. I was a design intern. I did so much. I really enjoyed that internship. It was in Brooklyn. So I was traveling from Manhattan to Brooklyn. At first it was like five days a week or four days a week and then it went down to like three days a week or something. Did I get paid? No. Originally I was supposed to have a stipend for one and that never happened. And then for the other one, the company was supposed to give me like $12 for each day that I worked, which was supposed to be for lunch. And they would always forget to give me that money and I would have to like remind them and at some point we'll get to that later. But yeah, the one in Brooklyn, it was, I'm gonna say like house, but like a part of the Brooklyn Fashion Design Accelerator, which was this really cool organization that was focused on designers and creatives within the fashion, apparel, and accessories industry that wanted to have a sustainable aspect to their company, their brand, their line, etc. I really enjoyed it there. I learned so much like during that internship because it was so small. E-commerce, styling for photo shoots for musical artists, styling and making garments for commercials, short videos, creating a custom gown, a couture gown for a formal wear event. I got a lot of hands-on experience there. Okay, so going into my second internship. So the first person I interned for, like my original internship, they kind of started doing things from home. Like They were like, oh, if you want to take on another internship, you can because you know there's some free days or you can like work from home. And I was like, oh, that might be cool to like, take on another internship. So I started applying. There's internships where people just want you to come in for like, a day two days. I don't know if it's well known, but it's a known brand that's on the smaller side and they have, I really, like, I don't know. It was really cool to gain like two different perspectives of being a fashion label. So this one was bigger. They had a bigger team. They had a sales team, a design team, and then like a creative director. And, but the designers were doing all the work. Pretty small, like under 20 people. That was, uh, like, if you can't tell, that's the one I quit. Starting off, everyone's so nice and cool. They tried to have that Devil Wears Prada moment when they look you up and down and kind of being snobby. And I think people try to intimidate you and I'm like, I'm not easily intimidated. Sorry. A lot of it was, I guess like traditional internship. I never had to get food or drinks or coffee for anybody, but it'd be like, oh, go pick up this from Sill go pick up this from whatever, like buttons and trim store, like go to the garment district. And basically at the, this other internship, I was helping them get ready for New York Fashion Week. And so I was just running a lot of errands, but there was another person there that was interning. And so like, there would be like times where they would call us both in, the designers were kind of like, I would either go to the manufacturing that they used in the garment district, or other things, but sometimes it'd be like, oh, like who do we want to send here? And I don't know where here is. I'm not familiar with New York City. I'm not from there. I'm not spending enough time there. So let's just give like people names. There's like one person, male, let's call him Spencer. And then there's female, let's call her Molly. Molly and Spencer. So they would like look at each other and it'd be like, so who do we want to send to blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not familiar. And it's like the other girl, she's actually living in New York City. She's working there. She She's in school, she's more familiar with it. They would just look at each other and like, in my head, I'm like, this is about to be some bullshit. They were like, let's send Taryn. Yeah, let's, let's send her. I would get on the train and then I'm like going up, up, up. And I remember I was on the orange line. On the right there, I'm like, so why were they acting so funny? Why did they choose to send me? And I'm like, I know it's going to be some bullshit. I get off and I'm walking through the projects. I'm not a scary person. As I'm getting off and I'm walking through because it was just right off the stop. Like, and I'm like, oh, they made such a big deal about this because they were sending me to the projects. 
I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, she's black. Like, she must be comfortable walking around the projects. As this keeps like progressing and going on, I remember Fashion Week happened. They didn't have like a big show, but they, the current president at that time was inaugurated. Everyone was doing these anti-Trump, like kind of like fashion things, right? And they did it too. The funny is Melania Trump's stylist wants to come in and look at the collection. Fresh off of that anti-Trump thing, but then the stylist is coming here and y'all like switch gears like, oh, we need to get some garment bags and then I need you to like stitch it in so I had to go get sent to get the garment bags from the container store y'all just had this like big hoo-ha over anti-trump and now the stylist is coming in and then the creative director came in he was almost never there now it's a big deal and here's the thing if you put something out there stand on it i got to see a lot of the people that manufacture in their clothing where they source from that was the most helpful for me like who covers like their boots and i also remember at that internship when manolo still had that little like boutique store that has since closed they sent me there to pick up 10 pairs of shoes and they come in those giant boxes these were boots i remember testing and i was like i don't think i can carry all these boxes on the subway for anyone else though if they were going and had to carry stuff they would send them in like a cab a car a taxi something and they would pay for it so the fact that i had to go there and tell them like hey i'm carrying 10 boxes of shoes you knew i had to pick up 10 boxes of shoes and you're like ended up having to call a car for me and some of the boots they were getting covered and those are the boots that i had to take to the projects like nothing wrong with the projects there's nothing wrong with i remember like they're like oh like do this and i was like okay so i'm gonna do that before i leave at six and because i was leaving at six mind you i'm not I'm not getting paid for this. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that before I leave. And then something with Spencer snapped. Cause I remember like, it was super like casual. I'm a very chill, calm person. I'm soft spoken. So when this happened, I was just like, what? So it's winter, it gets dark fast. I just wanted to get home and to also eat. And so he was like, I don't know why you're throwing shade, have attitude and throwing shade. One thing, I'm a black woman. I'm a young black woman from the South. If you think that shade, I don't know how much Real Housewives of Atlanta you watch to where you like, you don't know. Like if you don't know, you don't know. It was so awkward and he did it in front of people. And so I just looked at him. I was like, I'm not throwing shade. I literally get off at six. And he was like, you just go, just go. And he was like, if you don't want to be here, leave. And I'm like, okay, like I'm already leaving anyway. It was like close to six. I left, I remember I typed in an email. I feel like if you see my other video, why I quit my assistant buyer. Like, racism is gonna follow you in this industry. It's not uncommon. Nobody's making this up. Nobody wants people to be racist. Nobody wants to experience racism. It's just something that happens that we all pretty much unfortunately have to deal with. And it's in this industry, it's a small industry and it happens a lot so i feel like now that i'm putting out like really two videos about it it's not like i'm searching for this it just happens and it comes from a lot of places anti-blackness is in a lot of communities it's in pretty much every community so you experience it i remember i typed up an email and i just let them know like I've been experiencing this for a while. Mind you, this isn't my internship that I have to have in order to graduate. With all this laundry list of everything that happened, I'm out. Created a are like, oh, he wasn't being like racist. And I'm like, <sighs> again, like, it was like, oh, we would never do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, left on red, bye. I will not stay anywhere where racism is prevalent period if you see me doing another story on this which i hope that i won't because I, i'm good where i am for that internship it was a bigger name but i didn't really learn much what i did learn though sometimes you have to take the negative and learn what you can learn from that so what i learned from that internship is to treat people right zombiness is not going to get you anywhere like trying to be anna wintour's minion you don't even know her. It's not gonna get you anywhere. Like I learned so much and turning from a smaller company, there's like good and bad at both of these places. One was primarily good and one was primarily bad. You take what you get and you learn from it and you apply it in the future. And I feel like experiencing that caused me to be able to kind of single out things and pick up on things that are racist within the workplace. And because I was so young and that was like one of my first experiences dealing with racism in the workplace, honestly, like I had already been like about quitting I was, it's not worth it and that kind of solidified it for me the people in the industry that are open warm and welcoming are gonna be even like in a smaller smaller sector so it's really nice to meet those people you know I can't wait to like kind of become bigger in the industry and create opportunities for people and be that person that I wish that I had going into this industry
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you interned in New York City? Are you thinking about interning in New York City? What are you looking most forward to? And as always, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Thank you again.